Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome to my guide on how to conquer the world in the Hearts of Iron 4. First, some proof, because, oh, you know what, no, first I'm going to show you uh, that I did it. So, this is my Iron Man game as Poland, and as far as I know, I am the first to ever do it on video, and when I'm recording this, I think I'm still the only one. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, of course. And as time goes by, I'm sure many more people will do it. Okay, let's get back to the menu and I will show you the basics on how you can conquer the world without too much trouble. Well, there is some trouble and some hustle involved, but it is nowhere near impossible. So, um, my strategy can more or less be adapted for any country that is not an alliance leader. So, United Kingdom, Germany and the Soviet Union will well, it will not work as well for them, but uh, then again, if you play as one of them, you are also much, much more powerful than the other countries, statistically, so you shouldn't have... Well, you will have to use a different tactic, but it's also quite possible. Um, I have done my world conquest as Poland, and I'm going to use it as an example, because I know it very well. Um, but you can adapt it to almost anything if you adjust some... Uh, some political actions to suit your situation. Oh, I haven't selected it. Yeah, it didn't click for some reason. Um, so, yeah. Well, here we are, Poland. And then again, um, it will not use the unique, uh, the unique focuses of Poland and so on. This can be adapt adapted for almost any country. For example, you can do it as Hungary, you can do it as Romania, you can do it as Bulgaria, and so on. Also as non-Europeans, but I, I do prefer to play Europeans. I know, there's just more action here. Anyway, what is the strategy? Well, the first move, um, the first move that I did, and the first move that um, I recommend that you do, if you want to conquer the world, is you need to change your ideology to one of the evil ones. So, yeah, <laughs> I call them that, but basically there's, there's the grey thing, which is neutral, which is non-aligned. There's the blue democracy, and I think most of our viewers will agree that this is considered to be the good one, the good guys. And there's communism, and there's fascism. Um, so, first, you want your ideology to be one of the evil ones. You want to be communist or fascist. In this geopolitical state, I have chosen to go fascist first. Um, I'll explain why in a, in a minute. And how do you do that? Well, there are two ways to change your ideology quite easily. First of all, you can go for national focuses, and there will be some focuses that will change your ideology. Poland has a unique tree, but most countries have something that, um, that they can use for that. So, for example, here we have Go Right, that will increase your fascist support. Go Left, increase communist influence and liber uh, liberalism, and uh, that increases your democratic influence. Do not touch any of those. Don't use them. They're going to make world conquest much more difficult. Uh, what you want to do is mm, gather enough political power, either by just waiting or researching a national focus that will give you some of it, for example, this one. And once you have 150 political power, you want to hire an advisor, um, either a fascist demagogue or a communist revolutionary. Uh, unless, of course, you are already fascist or communist, like, for example, Hungary, that starts fascist. Then you don't have to worry about that initial step. For Poland, the first move is... Um, well, my first move was to hire the fascist demagogue, because it's, this is slightly more beneficial in the area. And what I did next was I fabricate... Once my ideology changed, I could basically fabricate uh, war goals. I could justify war goals against other countries. Now, Poland can also do that while non-aligned, because one of their mm, unique ideas decreases the world tension required by 40%, so at 10 we can already fabricate uh, war goals, but um, you don't really need to do that. You don't need to wait for that uh, option. You can just change your ideology and that will take care of and the justification method. So, mm, what I did, I justified uh, single war goals against those three Baltic countries, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, and also against Romania. Uh, I only justified one region. You can justify multiple, multiple regions, but if you are the only participant in the war, 
um, then it doesn't make a difference. If you are not the only participant in the war, then the more you have justified, the more you will be able to take quite easily. Um, but if you're the only participant, it doesn't matter, and the more you justify, the more world tension you generate. And we don't want to generate too much world tension, because if we do, um, the good guys, uh, United Kingdom of Fran and France, will start guaranteeing the guys that we are uh, trying to conquer. So, what I did is, I have justified war goals against uh, the Baltic countries and one against Romania, all simultaneously. I have built up my army. Well, um, exactly how to build up your army, it, it will depend on what country your problem you are playing is. I have, um, as Poland, I have built 20 infantry divisions, bringing my total troops up to 60, and then just um, switched to supplying them. And I trained them in the field. This is not the most... Um, this is not the most... Uh, optimal. It's not the optimal way to do it um, in terms of resources, but I did want to have the ability to have a uh, long front line. But you don't really need that um, so much. You do want them at full fighting strength, though. And then what I did in that campaign is I split my army in two, stationed one here and the other here on the borders, letting them entrench. And then, while all my war goals were ready, and I was fascist, of course, I did um, all the, these things simultaneously. I joined the Axis and I declared all those four wars simultaneously. And uh, this way, um, no one could have guaranteed those countries um, in between the wars, because by joining the fascists and declaring one war then another, I did generate some world tension. And if the world tension was enough um, to justify a guarantee of independence of a country, uh, then the United Kingdom and France uh, could jump in. I also improved relations with them, but at that point I am not certain it was necessary uh, by then. What I did, I um, kept my Romanian border secured and just moved my armies north until I conquered the Baltic states, annexing each one of them um, once they were ready to surrender. And then I moved south, uh, conquering Romania. Once I was done with Romania, or rather, when I was half done with Romania, I justified the war goal against Hungary, and then, when Romania was conquered, I attacked Hungary and conquered them. Now, mm, this will show you why, or rather, this is the reason why we actually went fascist. Because if we went communist, instead, Hungary, as a fascist country at the beginning, would have been guaranteed by the German Reich. Uh, and we don't want Hitler to guarantee this country. We want to conquer it. So that was slightly helpful. You can also do different variations of that, for example, conquer Romania and Bulgaria, or Yugoslavia even, if you if you work hard on that. Um, the thing is, before all the big things start, you do want to expand your power base a little bit, get some more factories, a little bit more manpower, a little bit more territory. And I especially liked my idea of conquering the Baltic States and Romania, because it gave me a nice border with the USSR. Now, my next step, the next step I, I, I did, while this was already happening, uh, was change my ideology to communism. As soon as... Um, oh, I didn't tell you about uh, the ideology change. Uh, as the support in the government for a certain party increases, you will get some events that can increase um, the power, for example, or at some point you can actually accept a referendum to change your government. And if they have enough support, you will get that event, and you can change your government. So as soon as I got the option, I changed my government to a fascist government, which made Poland a phalangist Poland. The country changes, the flag changes, and the leader changes. Um, so as soon as this was done, I fired the fascist demagogue Roman Domowski, and I have hired the communist revo revolutionary instead of him. And then our ideology started to drift towards communism. Once we were ready to change our government, we became communism, communist. Uh, and we were the People's Republic of Poland by that time. I've had um, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania and Hungary conquered by this moment. And then the time came to leave the Axis, because we were only in the Axis so that Hitler wouldn't guarantee Hungary. 
Um, of course, you can do different variations. You can conquer Czechoslovakia, uh, or you can conquer Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, and so on. Or if you're playing as a completely different country, um, your strategy will change as well. Anyway, um, it is important in the case of Poland to hurry with changing your government to communist after, after the fascist thing, because, um, because the USSR will at some point uh, get get greedy and want your land then they will not want to be your friends uh, because they will have uh, strategic reasons for not being your friends uh, you don't want that to happen and you can check that by offering them a non-aggression pact uh, if they want a non-aggression pact with you when you're already communist and that means they like you enough to accept you into their alliance and here comes our next move we leave the axis let me just show you the alliance map. We leave the axis and we join the Comintern. This way we're backed by the Soviet Union. Um, meanwhile we prepare our armies to face Germany with our base of operations built up over here. Now there can be two outcomes coming later. Uh, Germany can get into a war, um, into a different war depending on how you're playing, or they can demand Danzig. Mm, the event Danzig or war. In that case, if they're not fighting anyone else, just um, they're at peace and they want to take Danzig from you, I would advise that you accept their proposal and give them Danzig. It's only temporary. We'll take it back soon. So my next move is to just, uh, once we have given it mm, up to them, or, although you can avoid it if you are allied mm, with them for a sufficiently long time, and then the Soviet Union thing doesn't trigger, but it's risky. So I just give it. I just give it to them. Station my armies all around here, while of course upgrading and building them up, because that that will take three years for them to be ready to for war. Now the trick is to wait for a good opportunity. So basically, you want to wait for them to be fighting someone else. When Germany inevitably declares war in France, if you're playing with historical focus, if you're not, it can be different. Uh, when they start fighting on another front, your front line here will be weakened. So, um, let's say Germany declares war in France. You will want to wait a few weeks, maybe a month or two, until they shift the um, focus to a different border. And once they have most of their forces here, you declare war on them. Of course, you will need to justify a war goal first, but you can you can do it in advance. Just mm, try to calculate it right. You can start justifying a war goal, for example, when they declare war on, on France. And then it should be ready by the time you are ready. So you need to attack them and call in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union, well, it depends. I, I have seen them help a lot by sending tons of troops, and I have also seen them just focus on Asia and not help at all. But they will back you up in case there's trouble. Also, your war will probably be merged with the other wars Germany will be facing, so you will be, you will be de facto allies with the United Kingdom and France, which can also be quite helpful, and just slowly, slowly push securing your front lines against Germany. Uh, be cautious, do not do not do anything stupid, just uh, gradually, gradually push your front lines towards here. And as they will be facing opposition on two fronts, not having conquered Poland before, not having our economy base and so on, uh, you should be victorious. I will not get into details on how to fight the war, this is, uh, this is a matter for another video. Mm, we're here about, mm, we are here to talk about general strategy and geopolitics. So, once you have taken enough of Germany, and hopefully you will have taken Italy as well, just take as much territory as you, as you can. Make sure that you control it, and not, uh, not the Soviet Union, for example. So, if you see them sending troops, you might want to focus more on the shore, um, and so on and so forth. As you want to control as much territory as you can. Why? Well, because while you control it and while the war is still going on, you will get a ton of factories working for you, even if you were not to get the mm, territory afterwards. And move into Italy for the same reason and try to occupy it yourself, if you can, and not let the Allies hold it. 
Now, by the time you are finished in Europe, you have conquered Germany, Czechoslovakia, or other um, the puppet state that become um, that uh, forms after Germany takes what they can, uh, the area that uh, well will be annexed as Austria and Italy, or any and any other possible allies Germany might get, like Bulgaria. Make sure you occupy the territory. If they get Turkey, try to get Turkey, and so on. You should be powerful enough by that time, and your allies should back you up on that. If they get Spain, go and get Spain. Just uh, make sure that France doesn't get it, so we might need to do some naval invasions. But that is, again, um, a matter for another video. Once this war in Europe is over, uh, you will probably remain at war with Japan which is quite difficult to defeat because of the required naval invasions and their very high national unity. So what you want to do is once you have secured all the territory in Europe that you can secure, you will want to focus on making sure your forces are very strong and positioning them along the Soviet border. You won't be able to just draw a front line if you're allies, but you can just you know distribute them however you want and just prepare because this is going to be our next target. Mm. And the next move is also you might need to help the Allies take Japan, because in my game I have lost two years waiting for Tokyo to surrender until I finally mm, did a naval invasion here, because the AI was sort of stuck trying to invade it and failing all the time. So you need to keep a close eye on that so that you don't lose valuable time. Mm. If that happens, the best, mm, the best way to do it is just launch a naval invasion or if uh, your allies have secured some of the ports, just move your army to a port and then cl right click on another port and it will move there. And then you can take over Japan. Walking an army through the Soviet Union will take some time, but you do want to win the war eventually. So when everyone involved in the war surrenders, you will get a peace conference. Peace conferences are amazing. And again, I think I will cover that in another video, and maybe you already know how to behave on at a peace conference. But what you want to do is take all the land that you can directly as yourself. And how do you do that? Well, first of all, you will want to try and not let um, the Allies release countries that have been annexed by Germany before. So, for example, you will want to take uh, the, two re the three regions that constitute Austria, if you can, if you are the first to take them, and so on, if it is not already released. Otherwise, they will release Austria, but you do want those regions. This is the primary objective, I'd say. Uh, after that, um, you would like, you would want probably to just take some other territory that could be released as another country, like uh, the Czech Republic, for example, or you might want to focus on just having a connection to Italy. You do want to have a land connection. If... Um, I, I mean, I, I'm assuming you know how to work a peace conference. If not, I, I might make another video on that, so re refer to that. And at some point, everyone will have taken what they want, and there will be a lot of territory left over. Also, yeah, claim Bulgaria as soon as you can, because then they will just change the government, and so on. All the small countries that you can claim, claim them. Germany will probably have their government changed to a different one, but there will be a lot of territory that will not be claimed. So what you can do is just take everything that is left over. In my game, I ended up with having almost all of Germany without a little bit here and perhaps little bits here, and all of Italy without Rome itself as Poland. That boosts your economy, and also Bulgaria and a bit of Turkey. That boosts your economy tremendously. So when this piece... Um, oh, I didn't say one more thing. While the war is going on, you will want to fire your communist revolutionary. Actually, you need to fire him right after you change your government. And then, while the war is going on, you will want to hire a democratic reformer and slowly drift into democracy. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you in a little while. Um, first, just make sure that you take as much territory as you can and don't just restrict yourself to Europe. There is no penalty on having territory overseas if you can take Italian stuff in Africa. Uh, if you can take bits of Japan, take it all. Take everything you can. You will need the economy. 
you, your economy will need a boost. Uh, also, I am assuming that the United States uh, will join the Allies. Um, after that, by the time the war ends, you should already be a democratic country. So, the Republic of Poland. Um, the moment the war finishes, what you want to do is leave the Comintern, leave faction, and immediately join the Allies before the Soviets have a chance to attack you. And prepare for war. Just station lots of mm, station your army on the Soviet border, entrench yourself and so on, but make sure that you're not missing any communist countries that the Soviets might have flipped to communism in the peace deal in Europe, because they could, you know, come up from behind and cause some trouble, so leave some forces for them. So make sure that you entrench your border and start justifying your war goal against the Soviet Union, because this is your next target. However, if you do that, it is very, very probable that they will attack you first, because they, they will want to take some of your land. So just make sure that you are able to defend, hold them back for at least some time. Um, of course, it goes without saying, you have to upgrade your technology and armies and build up new troops all the time. But you will, you will have enough time to do that with, and enough um, production power to do that with all the territory that you have taken. Um, you need to hold out for a little while and then the Allies will back you up. Of course, you need to call them to that war. And you might, be just, you might just be powerful enough to start pushing on your own. So just start pushing and be mindful of all the other countries that might be um, your enemy. Don't leave any territory behind untaken, even if the country has surrendered. Because even though they have surrendered, they can start retaking territory somehow. Uh, I don't know if it's a bug or not, but just make sure that you look out for that. And how I did that, it was actually quite entertaining for me, quite satisfying. I just stationed all my armies here, and then I made an offensive line at the shores. After Soviet Union surrenders, which should be around when you reach maybe this area, maybe this area, I don't remember how far, um, but the national unity is not that high, so you don't, you certainly don't have to go through all of it. Before you reach ha the half point, it, it will happen. You'll still need to mop up some of its allies, but when they do, if you have such a nice border as, as we did here, you will get control of all of its territory. And if you declare the war, you should be considered the war leader, even if you are not Poland, if you're playing as a different country. So you should also receive a lot of the territory, unless someone else is bordering the territory that you would be receiving otherwise. Um, those mechanics are a bit complicated, let's not get into them. Anyway, um, once you have done everything in the area, once you have conquered um, all the Comintern nations, once they have all surrendered, well, you will have another peace deal, another peace conference. And you should do exactly the same thing as you did with Germany. Take all the land that you can. Everything. Directly. As you are on the side of the Allies, they will just want to change the ideology of some countries and release some countries. And probably some of them will want some, uh, some Asian stuff. Uh, what you want to do is just build up your economy and territory, take everything that you can. Also, while the war against the Soviet Union is going on, you will want to be changing your ideology from democracy back to communism. You could theoretically do fascist, but I'm not sure if the Allies will not kick you out of an alliance if you're fascist, so I recommend going communist again. The same way, you just change the advisor, and make sure to not take any national focuses that give you permanent bonuses to ideologies, because then you might not be able to change your ideology. So, once the Soviet Union, once the Comintern has surrendered, you take everything from them. And that's the second phase of our plan done. Now, you're basically the Soviet Union on steroids. You have Poland, Germany, Italy, and the Soviet Union. And some other stuff along the way, unless you're playing as a different country, but you should still have tons and tons of territory, tons and tons of factories, and be able to field a huge army. So, now, it is time to justify war goals and conquer all the nations that are not aligned with the only remaining alliance, which is your alliance, the Allies. So, um, let's see. The Allies start off as all, all the red bits here, but they will grow quite quickly. Um, by the time you are done with the Soviet Union, Axis and the Comintern will not exist. What you want to do is stay in the Allies to make sure they do not 
start guaranteeing independence and letting people in to their alliance too much and just conquer everyone who is white on the map, who is non-aligned. Now, there's... Um, uh, you can also attack all the states that are guaranteed by someone in your alliance without um, without the guarantor, the one that guarantees uh, their independence coming in to the war, because an alliance is more important than a guarantee. Now, this might be changed because, um, well, I know Paradox is aware of this, uh, maybe you will not be able to declare war on someone who is in your alliance and guarantee, sorry, Maybe you will not be able to declare war on someone who is guaranteed by someone in your alliance. Uh, they might uh, might change that. But at the moment of recording, you certainly are able to do that. You can... Um, so basically you can conquer everyone who is not in your alliance. Do that. Get a big economic base. In the meantime, research some planes. You will want to get, if you can, You'll want to get some jet fighters, uh, sorry, jet fighters if you can, or just lots of good fighters. Uh, you'll want some strategic bombers, but it doesn't matter that much, and you will certainly, most importantly, want to have nuclear bombs once you're done with this. They're very, very important. Uh, jet fighters help, but they're not, not crucial. Having air superiority is crucial, so if you don't get very good fighters, get lots of them. Also get good air doctrines that will help you achieve air superiority in the region. And also, of course, build up and develop your army. But the planes will be crucial. Now, by the time you have conquered everyone who is not protected by your alliance, you will want to get ready to fight your alliance. Um, now, this is pre pretty advanced stuff, managing many, many front lines at the same time. Uh, but I'm certain by the time you conquer the Soviet Union and all the other bits and pieces of the world, you will be familiar with managing your army. Now, the strategy for fighting such a war is, well, there are a few ways to do it. Uh, the one I chose is to not finish your last war against one of the, uh, the guys that were, you know, uh, that were not part of the Allies, but get ready, station your armies on on all the borders and so on, get your planes in the air, get air superiority, uh, basically prepare for war, and then just leave the alliance. Then mm, if the country you are fighting is, well, for me it was uh, the Dominican Republic, I think, no, sorry, uh, it was Haiti for me, I think they are democratic, they were invited into the allies, I think, and then the Allies started joining that war, which is uh, which is what we wanted. They didn't all join at the same time, and we could just uh, fight them one by one. But one day, not really one by one, because they joined in a very short period of time. But what you need to do is drop several nukes on their capitals, on the capital of every country that is your enemy, and it's strong enough to be a problem. You see, national unity. The base national unity value here, 40%, but it, it won't last, it will get bigger later. Um, it has a minimum, minimum value of 10%. Now, every nuke you drop on a country will decrease that value. Drop enough, I mean, and also drop them on high-value provinces, like the capital, uh, to have the national unity base go to 10%, which is the minimum. Once it's there, it's often enough to just take the capital of the country to conquer them. For France, it was enough that I took Paris with a paratrooper strike behind enemy lines and I just surrendered. For, um, for Great Britain, it was enough that I took uh, London, Dover and Birmingham, I believe, after I have nuked London numerous times, that they surrendered. Uh, it was a little bit more difficult for the USA. I was invading from the south, from Mexico, and I did have to cut through half of their country before they surrendered, even though I have dropped several nukes on Washington and New York. So that's because the southern provinces don't have a lot of victory points. You could do that with a naval invasion of um, the high-value provinces, but naval invasions are difficult to manage, so make sure that you know how to do them if this is the way 
you want to do this. Uh, China and British Raj, because China usually grows quite huge, and British Raj could be problematic because they are very populous, the terrain is difficult, and they're quite big. So I did have to spend several years grinding into their territory, sometimes even nuking frontline divisions. Finally, Africa. Cutting into Africa can be quite difficult. Um, but heed one, one warning. Do not leave any pockets of enemy troops behind, even if the enemy surrenders. As I said before, if the enemy surrenders, not all of its territory goes to you or someone else in your war. Some of the territory will remain enemy. And if there are troops in that territory, they can invade you. And also they can still build troops for some reason, so they can retake the territory. You need to make sure that you are clear there are no pockets of resistance behind enemy lines. Also, watch out for any naval crossings. Like, for example, here, there's a naval crossing. So if you take all the territory here on the coast, on the southern coast of Turkey, but leave the islands, they can still invade you from there. But I've seen that the countries that have surrendered don't really do naval invasions. So you don't have to worry about um, seclude, um, separated islands, islands uh, separated from the mainland. So you don't necessarily have to launch invasions there. So taking Africa can be problematic because you'll have to maintain a very, a very uh, long front line. It's often beneficial to manage it manually sometimes, or rather keep the front line, but sometimes give a little bit of a push to certain units, or just have a smaller army riding around and taking stuff. Um, right, so once you have taken all of the continental territories, and once you have defeated the United States and Canada, which can be quite difficult. I was attacking from Mexico, but if you are unable to attack them because, um, because you couldn't attack uh, a guaranteed nation because something changed in the, in the game, you will need to launch a massive, massive naval invasion. But it's enough for you to secure a port and a couple of provinces. For example, if you land in New York, secure a couple of provinces, uh, take an airport and then launch a few nukes, they should surrender if you take just those provinces. So it is not impossible even if you are just doing a naval invasion, but then you obviously you need to have a big fleet. But you will be the most powerful nation in the world by that point. You will have Germany, Italy, Soviet Union and so on. So you can certainly build such a navy. Just be mindful of manpower. Now, after you're done with all that, you will own the big continents. Make sure you don't forget the islands, like I almost didn't complete my world conquest because I forgot the island islands. Um, and then the most difficult part, the naval invasions. Uh, actually I found Australia to be the most difficult to invade. They had very good defenses on the shore. Mm, so what I did, I actually nuked the enemy divisions as my troops were marching in. Also be mindful of supplies and air superiority and convoy coverage, and so on. Mm, naval warfare and naval invasions are quite difficult, but but it is, it, it's possible to figure them out. If not, search for a guide. I might even make one myself. And that will be it. When the enemy surrenders, you can just demand everything, and you will have conquered the world. Before you do that, make sure that you don't forget anyone. You don't leave anyone hanging. Also, while this war is going on, as there will be no further wars in the world, you can, in the meantime, change your ideology to whatever you want. For example, I started the wars as communist Poland, but I don't like communism very much. So during the war, I have changed my government to a democratic one. The war was already raging, so it didn't matter for that reason. Mm, and what else? I think that concludes it. This is how I conquered the world, and this is how you can do it. And you can adapt this strategy to almost any country. You can do it as uh, Czechoslovakia, you can do it as Romania, you can do it as Yugoslavia, Hungary, Austria, Bulgaria. Well, maybe not Austria, because they will get attacked by the Soviets quite quickly. So for Austria, the situation should be a little bit different. So you're not Soviets, Germans. Right. So, basically, that is the situation. If you want to do it as, for example, a South American country, it will be quite a bit more complicated, but you can still get a lot of territory, even from Germany or the Soviet Union, if you are on the right side of the conflict. And I think that's about it, really. 
So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, um, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for future updates. And um, yeah, enjoy the game because it's amazing. Thank you. Goodbye.